So I am here at what I think is probably the most impressive beef menu of any steak restaurant. And forget steak restaurant. The most impressive array of beef I've ever seen on a restaurant menu anywhere on earth. I'm here with Doug Saltis That's at right. RPM Steakhouse. Yep. Um, he's a New York boy, so the guy knows steak. But you moved to Chicago eight years ago? Yeah, but eight yeah, years, but you years have, ago. We were just going over with history. I mean, an amazing resume. Like, he should be really doing three-star motion food. Instead, he's dedicated all of his energy, all of his craft, all of his knowledge to making the finest beef menu anywhere on earth. We have a few of the items here, but I, I can't even, we can't even begin to touch how much stuff is on the menu. It's like every great piece of American beef, beef from Japan, New Zealand, I mean, everywhere in the world, right? But yeah, we're, we're just looking for the best of the best. So if we're looking for grass-fed beef, we're, we'll, there's no stone we won't overturn, right? We have some great stuff here from the Midwest that we use and we really enjoy. Uh, we have some great bison that's grass-fed that we love from the High Plains and Montana, but we found the best there is Cape Grim in Australia. And, and so that's what we'll use for our grass beef when we're bringing it in. And then, you know, it all started, like you're talking about the best of the best. Started with one place, one house, Master's Beef, Dry's Beef, the New, the New York stuff. In, that, in, in New York City, in yeah. the Bronx, still in the, Bronx. the old school, the oldest dry adrium, I think, on the Eastern Seaboard. I think the oldest one in America, I'd yeah, imagine. Yeah, it's, you know? it's an amazing and, room. And, and old school, old school people. And, and those guys, there. just to give it context, they're bringing, in, they're bringing in sides of beef, which no one else does anymore. They're bringing in whole sides, they break them down in the Bronx, and then they age them. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, it's something that's gonna disappear, right? So we hold on to it, we cherish it, we champion it. it, it, it what, a, what a beef once was in America. Right, the right, giant, the classic expression of the American beef. The best steers of the Midwest, hanging on trains. And that's what we have here, right? This is a New York strip? Bone in New York strip from Master's Beef. You know, on, the, on that bone, you know, you get get our salads out of the way. On those classic, this is a classic cut. Yeah. Right? So that, that, new, that New York strip, right, that 109 with the bone behind it, you get the, all that funk in, in, in a superior way. So I love. So let's just do a yeah. little trim in here. Yeah, get, get that bone out of the way. And this, for me, shows the real expression of the beef. By the way, I, I'm, a, I'm very accomplished when it comes to cutting beef, but this knife is like, it's like a laser beam. You like, know, it's, it feels part of the meal. I, oh. I mean, Hold on a second. We talked about the cooking and the rest of how we this, do it here. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see. That's wire to wire. Yeah. It's what we call wire to wire so, rare. So you see a lot of guys now with plastic bags and blow torches trying to make this happen. I hate right. sous vide. I'm just going to come out and say it right now. Like I said, you see a lot of guys with plastic bags and blow torches. We're cooking steaks the old fashioned way with some, some you know, added intelligence sort of how to rest the beef properly. That's, that. The nose, you smell That's that? the smell of American exceptionalism right there. So it's a brand standard of dry aged beef. Exceptional. I mean, the texture is amazing. The, the nose on it's incredible. This is, for me, is what, it's, it's like the red wine of beef. It has all those nuances, it has all that deep funk. It has I'm, all that great flavor. This is one of the great steaks. I mean, the, the flavor of this is so profound. It tastes like beef, but you're getting those. If you've ever been to the Master's Room, which I know you have. You smell it right now. You taste what you smell when you walk into that room. It's really amazing. It's, it's, a, it's that real expression of terroir. Lone Mountain Ranch, fortunate to meet these guys. Great product, you know. So where is this from? It starts off in New Mexico. That's where these are these are born, brought in the world. It's it's Tajima beef. It's been grown and harvested in... So yeah, it's the traditional black beef, the Tajima beef from Japan. Right. The texture is amazing. You could, uh, you, it smells like Japanese. Uh, yeah, it smells like Japanese beef. This is one of the best expressions there, I've seen in the states. Is, there is something about. It's not the sweetness, but it, it's there's a warmth to it. It's something. It's hard to describe, but once you know Japanese beef, textures unparalleled, right? So wow! It's, it starts off as like high elevation in New Mexico. After that, around one and a half, two years old, we bring it up to Iowa. This being fed in alfalfa, fed in a Kobe beef feeding farm, in a farm that just handles and, and processes just 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 high-end American Wagyu. Japanese cattle, yeah. I love the product, incredible. And this here sets the tone for what we're about to taste next. I mean, you're, I'm already getting that that really distinct mouthfeel of this, this breed of beef has a fat that actually melts at room temperature. So when you put it in your mouth, even if you don't do anything, it's already melting in your mouth, right? This is surely the piece de resistance. This is. So we have we have three different cuts to taste today. We're actually going to do it this way so that they can see the uh, inside. 
So I, I mentioned this restaurant was built off our dry aged beef program. But just like everything else, it was, it was finding that truest expression of what it is. We had a huge hesitation about serving Wagyu or Japanese beef here until we met the real farms, the real people. And as you had a chance to see in the kitchen, they're all, they're all different. It's mm -hmm. like small farm vegetables. It's like, it's, these, are, these are, I mean, 10 heads a month. This is not exactly. Big and this and is think tiny. about when you deal with production that you get genetic variants that paradoxically you don't get when you're producing tens of thousands of head of beef. They will come out the same, right? These animals live a longer and a, and a, and a more complex life. 100%. And, and they're cared for and they're loved. And, and they're really just like they're singular. Right. So each one is. Is of, of that house. Yeah. Right? I mean, You're, look. There is something about the diligence, the, the respect for life that the Japanese have for that beef that I think we need to embrace in this country. Right? And I think we're starting to, right? No, we're, I, we're, we totally do. And, and the result is... The Lone Mountain, right? Yeah, the, the, exactly. We, we once did, right? And that's what was right here, the Master's Beef. We once did that. We lost our way, I think, for probably about well, 70 years. Commoditization, right? Yeah. right? We're back now in a big way, right? We talk about the Lone Mountain Beef. We talk about bringing the Baca Vieja from Petaluma, my, my whole meats. These are right. like the original things. We're, we're turning the clock backwards to produce better products. And I, and I see it in the vegetables. I see it in meat. I see it in our fishing here. And it's, it's, it's funny because beef is the last thing that that, that ethos is actually, because it's so established, people think that USDA primed right, 28 days, that's it, there's nothing better. Yeah. I don't even think that it's better or worse, it's that we want different expressions and we've got that in our vegetables, we've got it in our seafood, well, you know, it's time that we did that with beef. And, I, and that's one of the things I want to champion here, and really be able to present that one table with all the nuances of American beef. Right. And um, American beef and then the best of the world. Well, right? speaking of best of the world, tell them what we have here. So we have our true 100% Tajima Kobe beef. And we have two other ones that expression of the same farm. We want a 75 day dry age Hokkaido snow beef. So you're taking something that's already, thank you. You're taking something that not even available, already unobtainable, the best of the best, and then the cherry on top. Is the dry aging. Dry aging. So giving that funk back to it, that American flavor back. So let's try these. You know, we love serving with a little bit of and fresh then, wasabi. And which is this one? This right here is the Hokkaido. Okay. So we have the Hokkaido 75 day, Hokkaido's snow beef, the snow beef fresh, un, fresh, unaged. So we'll be able to taste a difference. And then this is this is a, a true what? It's actually a Kobe beef. Yeah, true. So Kobe. just to, I'm just just go over it quickly. All Japanese beef is wagyu. Yeah. All Kobe is wagyu, but not all wagyu is Kobe. If that makes sense. It's champagne, right? Exactly. It's a Anybody, regional distinction. Yeah, there's tons of bubbly wine right. out there, but champagne is. So should function. we start with the? Uh, yeah, let's start with the, the Kobe, the king. But look at the color. Look at that. Beautifully cooked. And this one over the wood grill, so. Mm. Wow. Is that ridiculous? The flavor is so rounded. It's so... But at the same time, it's gentle, right? Gentle, but I love you get the grill nuances. Well, that's... Yeah, right exactly. Now. Just incredible. And then it's, you always get it on the bottom of your jowl. That's just perfect. I think we need to do another one of those. Yeah. One more, just, just to make you jealous out there. Not jealous, inspired to get down to RPM. Mm. I love that. This is very expensive, but really, what we just ate is probably enough. No, well, that's the best thing about it. You know, we serve it in three-ounce portions. It, you know, if there was four or five people here, right? We get one or two of them and, and snack on it and be great, right? It's, it's so, that indulgence without going crazy. Right. So that is, a, I mean... I mean, glistening. It, yeah, look talking, at... You're talking about melting in room temperature. Look at it glistening right now. So this is the fresh Hakido snow beef. Yes. And this is produced very high up in the mountains? High, that... Highest elevation, very cold, produces incredible fat. You know, this, this is... One guy's dream. Oh my god. Make this come on. No, I mean, that is that's ridiculous. Crazy. The mouthfeel on that it, it just explodes. Is that delicious? It's I absolutely mean, delicious. Crazy, right? So, you know, I talked about hesitation. When we first opened up, I was like, you know, Wagyu beef, I I, I I didn't have the knowledge I have now. I didn't mm -hmm. have the resource I had then. This is four years ago. I'm gonna try another one, but it, it's almost too rich to eat more than a, two bites of this. Yeah, it was almost. I, I was like, I'm not gonna serve wagyu. I mean, it's it's bastardized. It's all over the place. Mm -hmm. There's a bar down the street serving a five dollar wagyu burger. 
what can I do? We, we met some great importers. We had a chance to visit some small farms. And you know what? It translated. Our guests love it. They mm -hmm. love the idea of the affordable, the reachable luxury. Well, it's also fascinating to, you can sit here and get a three ounce piece of beef and then get some dry aged USDA Prime and really compare the two in contrast. Well, the compare and contrast is my favorite thing, right? We can see that all of it is different. Everything has its unique flavor. Right. And, that, and that's what made us work even harder to get the best of each one. And now, this red. is 75 day dry aged Hokkaido snow. Hokkaido snow beef. This has got to be uh, some of the rarest beef. Nobody's eating in this the besides world. you and I right now. Oh, is that right? Yeah, we're the only so ones having this right now. Meat life first. Yeah. Come on. Are you kidding me? This tastes like charcuterie. It tastes like a prosciutto de palma. Yeah, that's sweet. That sweet, sweet, funk. funky, almost gamey, but not in the sense of like wild game. No, I but mean, there's like there's the an depth. exuberance to the it. Depth. Right? Yeah, there's a brightness. There, there is a. It, it, it's like it's intense. That's all. No, I mean, me, I'm pretty blown away by the flavor of this. I might have to try it again. So when somebody says wagyu is wagyu, I can have a burger down the block for six bucks and this and that. It's like you try these three. These are three different worlds in their own. Yeah, and, and this one here, I've tasted it. I've been to Japan many times, and I've, I've eaten beef from all over, but that's totally unique. Totally unique. Oh, no, 100%. You know? know? Like, there's nobody else doing it. No, and, right. and, and getting that flavor, it's just, it's spectacular. That starts with the farm, though. That starts from the animal, the farm, of how course. it's raised. And, that, and that's the one thing about the way it's raised in Japan. It's like literally every moment of that animal's life is accounted for and quantified. And, and right, so it, the outcome is this yeah we work real hard every day to find the best of the best to make it very easy for us and that's really how it works for us we find the best that we can of every product our beef stands out our grass feds the best our dry age is the best our japanese beef is the best we can find and talk about the way you cook it because i really think that the way you cook it mirrors the traits of the beef so your usda prime you're cooking in a classic steakhouse well the usda prime the dry aged boiler, beef, right? what we're looking for right and i'm saying we me and you and hopefully everybody else is is that New York dry aged beef flavor? You don't accomplish that when you get on the plate without putting in a high speed boiler. Learning you how to use that. You need that that brute force. You need that. You want to caramelize it outside. We have so much sugars in there. All that, all that, that great caramelization. You want that char. You want that crunch on the outside of that American style New York dry aged beef. So that only happens with a high speed boiler. Going going through all the different things we do. That lone mountain, right? That's in our coal oven. The Jasper coal oven. Okay, so Jasper's from Spain. It's from right? Spain. Uh, so really, it's a very, very few places in America have them. Yeah, right? but it's, really, a coal, it's a coal oven. It's a coal oven. Which is like insane, right? You got a coal oven. What year is this, right? So everything we have it is designed for those beef. Right. It's cooked that way. We store it somewhere. We buy it from the right people. Unfortunately for uh, my purchaser, we probably use about 16 different purveyors. For beef? For beef. We're That's bringing incredible. stuff in. You know, you saw it in the kitchen today. We have four or five cuts off the menu. Yeah, I mean, things like hanger steaks and things that you don't... See. Well, the hanger we're buying the best there is, right? The prime hanger tender for Keystone Farms, dead center of Kansas City. We're buying that. We have we have the High Plains Ranch bringing in a long bone bison thing. It's Bison is important for me. Bison is important for that compare and contrast to this mm -hmm. beef. Bison is what America had. It's what it was. Right. We're lucky we had settlers here. They brought over the best of the world, right? You just talk about Lone Mountain, they brought over Kobe beef from Japan. The true taste for me of America is bison. So High Plains Ranch, we serve their tenderloin all the time, bringing the long bone, just incredible. So throughout the course of a meal, you're trying, I mean, you're tasting the world. You're tasting the and full spectrum. And that's really, when you come to RPM Steak, and if you've watched it this far, like what you're doing if you're not gonna come here, frankly, um, the way to come here is not like every other steakhouse. Oh, porterhouse for two and, you know, no. oysters come here and like bring people with you yeah get a piece of usd prime but you can try like beef from all over the world different cuts things that like age for weird periods of time like yeah most steakhouses have amazing wine lists right and then they have like two steaks on the menu this is the one place that the wine list and the beef list are like comparable right it's, you the selection you can have you can come here you can come here seven days and have a different steak experience well listen thank you for watching uh i can't emphasize this enough if you love beef if you love the flavor of steak get down to rpm steak in chicago what's the address 66 west kinsey harder river north fantastic neighborhood the hospitality is unparalleled the beef is world class and i mean that literally